Hi, my name's Scott the Miniature Maniac, and today we're kit bashing an awesome wizard. This video is sponsored by Flare Games. What up, mini family? Conversions are a fun way to craft a unique character for your games without needing any prior sculpting knowledge. There is one thing you do need, though, and that's a pile of unpainted miniatures to scavenge bits from. And between you and me, I know you have enough spare plastic to account for all of the waste in the Pacific. With that depressing statement, let's kick off our conversion. Now, I don't really have a process for converting miniatures ironed out, so let's take the shotgun approach. Collecting all the unpainted miniature bits and bobs that I have and going through them one at a time until I find pieces that I want to use. It's always important whenever you're engaging in a creative pursuit to have some kind of inspiration for your paint scheme, your conversion, or your sculpt if you have talent unlike me. For this particular wizard, I'm drawing inspiration from a mobile game called Super Spell Heroes. Super Spell Heroes is a pattern matching, spell singing mobile game chock full of epic looking wizards. However, what's a wizard without a sweet outfit? I mean, Gandalf the White has the inspiration for his outfit in his name, so obviously it's important. These are where all my unpainted projects go to die. Flare Games reached out to me to sponsor an episode on my channel. The premise was a simple competition called What Would an Ultimate Wizard Wear? What I had to do was pick one of their starting characters, either Zenron, Thoban, or Jane, and create an alternate skin for it. I can tell you right now, homeboy Zenron has a little evil thing going on that I'm all about, despite being one of the heroes of the game. This guy clearly has a dark side, and his costume has chains! Y'all know how much I love chains. So that'll be the inspiration for this build, creating an alternate skin for Zenron. The cool part about this competition is that you guys can also participate with your own art. Pick one of the three starting characters and design an awesome new skin for it. Make sure to download the game via the link in the description below, available on Android and iOS to draw inspiration from the aesthetics of the game. To enter, all you have to do is post a picture of your entry to Twitter or Instagram with the hashtag SuperSpellHeroes and your in-game name. Did I mention prizes? Oh yeah, there are some serious prizes. First, second, and third will all have their entries immortalized in the game itself, plus the following rewards. First place gets a MacBook Pro with a one-year Adobe Creative Suite subscription. Second place gets a Wacom Bamboo Slate Smart Pad, and third place gets a Copic Sketch Marker Set. As a simple rule set, your character must have the basic silhouette of one of the characters in game, and also be wearing clothes. Good luck with your entry, and thank you to Flare Games for sponsoring this video. I really appreciate it. I'm making a wizard, so I know I need the pieces for his staff. Comment below if you've ever bought resin from a company and it smells like trash. Is this a flattering angle for me? <coughs> this skull could make for a sweet top cap, and this fiery hand could make for a great mid-fireball spell cast. Maybe these blades could turn my wizard into a battle wizard. These blade pieces came from a sci-fi box set, and that brings up a good point. Don't limit your bit selection to only sci-fi if you're making a sci-fi conversion, and only fantasy if you're making a fantasy conversion. Version. You can repurpose parts as much as your creativity allows for. I still needed a main body to base my wizard on. The perfect mini basically fell into my lap. This limited edition bone saw from a game called Guild Ball. He looks badass. We'll need to replace his weapons with the fiery hand that I found earlier and also a staff to make him sufficiently wizardly. That's a word, right? Wizardly? So Zenron is getting a makeover courtesy of yours truly and there are a few things I like about his design that I want to keep around and that's his chains, obviously. The violet gems and also the fact that he's floating. I'm also curious what Zenron's face looks like. Maybe we could do an unhooded version of him. Oh, look at that. The model I picked out has a hood on its back. How convenient! Also, apparently Zenron is jacked under them sleeves and has a beautiful bald head. But this miniature has legs, and Zenron has none, so let's start with a little bit of amputation. But first, a moment of silence. We'll start the conversion by hacking the legs off with some clippers and then grinding away the bulk of the body with a Dremel and a tiny bowl gouge. I wore eye and mouth protection because tiny pieces of pewter were flying everywhere. After removing the bulk of the legs, I drilled in a hole and installed a very long brass rod that will help me hold the miniature while converting, but also help me with basing him up too. I then turned my attention toward the easiest of the remaining conversions, the hand replacements. I clipped off Bonesaw's left hand, after checking about three times to make sure that, that was the right hand, and then glued it in place. Now we have a sweet magic hand! 
After that, I started to work on the conversion that I was most concerned about, and that's repositioning the right arm so that he has a more natural staff holding position. I did consider keeping the position of the arm normal and having the staff going behind his back, but it's something I like about the traditional pose. So I took a hobby saw and hacked off his arm at the elbow. It's important to use a hobby saw here because if we use clippers, I'd pinch the metal and then I'd lose a lot of material filing it flat again. If we use a thin curved hobby saw, the surface stays nice and flat and all I need to do is file off the burr on the edge of each piece. While the forearm was off, I removed the bulk of the weapon and drilled out a hole in his hand which would later receive a staff. Next, I drilled holes into both arm pieces and installed an oversized pin into the bicep with super glue. Then I kept checking the forearm fit and clipping it off until I got the perfect length and then glued that in place. Next, I took two part epoxy, in this case epoxy sculpt, and started to fill in the gap in the elbow. You could use green stuff here if you wanted as well. Next came the part that I was most concerned about, which is sculpting. I had to make some kind of muscle detail. My only advice here is that you need an incredibly small amount of material to make these details look pronounced, so go slowly and use some sculpting tools for help. These color shapers are very helpful for smoothing the surface with a little help from water. I can't tell if this is looking good or if it's looking like spaghetti. We'll find out when we prime the miniature. Primer reveals all issues. With some epoxy sculpt, I bulked up where the legs would be. While my putty dried, I worked on the staff. I cut an oversized piece of brass that fit into the hole in the hand with the intent of trimming it to length later. The first detail I added was the skull I found earlier. I simply drilled a hole in the skull and stuck it on and then started to add my battle wizard blades. But I realized they were not identical. So I went back to the same sprue I got them from and got two smaller blades and put them on the left and right side of the skull. And then I was thinking, what should I do with one of the larger blades? And then it hit me, Grim Reaper staff. Now we're cooking with gas. Next, I wrapped the whole assembly in some chain because every project needs more chain and then attached a little cylinder thing to the bottom of the staff and then realized that I needed to remove that so I could actually fit the staff into the whole hand. Whole hand sounds like a, a terrible phrase, but I can't stop saying it. Whole hand. I noticed the arm was a little loose, so I popped it off and added a little glue and drove it home, like a glove. Now, he needs something going on in the leg region so he doesn't look like a bowling pin. What could be better than more chain? I wanted to have a bunch of wavy, floaty chains kind of coming out of the leg region. And in the previous projects, when I've done chain, I've used necklace material and not two scale chain. Or as my friend Kenny less eloquently puts it. Scott, your chains suck. So I went and got two scale chain and covered the entire leg region. Once that was done, I started adding the floating chain. The procedure I learned to do after some trial and error was to get some wax paper and put down oil and cut lengths of chain and position them with the bends that I wanted and then touch a very small amount of super glue thin to each individual link. After the glue dries, they break away from the wax paper and I can adhere them to the body. It's important to have multiple layers of this chain at different heights and lengths to give it good volume and lots of visual interest. Once that was done, I had to do one last thing, and that was shave off the rat catcher logo on his shoulder. It didn't make sense for Zenron to have a rat on his shoulder. We needed something a little bit more general. Now we're ready for painting. In the interest of keeping this video under 30 minutes, I'm going to talk about my general approach to this version of Zenron as opposed to getting into the nitty gritty details. We'll save portions of this paint job for separate videos, like the object source lighting part. I started on the fabric and I was inspired by Zenron's robe color, so I tried to match it for my shadow tone. I ended up building up the color with a yellowish highlight because the shadow was purple and I wanted to develop a highlight that contrasted my shadow nicely. Next, I worked on the leather elements, starting with a rich brown tone and shading down with navy blue and highlighting up with a cool blue. I wanted to try this contrasting color section on multiple parts and once I started to complete the leather portions, the model started to really come alive. Next, I worked on the skin and I wanted to give him an inhuman skin tone, so I went with blue. Blue skin, no legs. Prince Ali, fabulous! I figured Zenron wasn't human, but was more of a spirit of some kind, hence the blue skin. I also gave him teal eyes, messing up about a million times because Zenron has teal eyes. Next, I started to work on the metals. I painted a variety of metal tones and washed them with a blue ink I made with a pinch of flow improver and water. I was leaning the palette toward cold tones because of the next and final step in the paint job. I wanted the fiery hand and the eyes of the skull to be a magenta like Zenron's original staff and I wanted to draw attention, hence the majority of the palette being cold. This warm tone will stick out like a sore thumb. I also added some object source lighting with the fiery hand, which as Anne mentioned, I will be going over in a future video. 
I tossed him on a base, and that was this epic kit bash complete. I love the idea of conversions, and I'm happy I finally gave it a shot. I'd love to do more of this in the future. Have you guys ever converted a miniature? Comment below, tell me your conversion stories. One thing I forgot to mention is that I'm giving this model away to one of my patrons. So if you're interested in winning it, you can find a link to my Patreon campaign in the description below. Thanks for checking out my video. As previously mentioned, if you want to download Super Spell Heroes, you can find a link in the description below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to support the channel, I have a Patreon campaign with a bunch of fun rewards and also a merchandise store linked in the description below. Subscribe or die, and most importantly, don't forget to burn my minis!